They are predators who attack soldiers, airmen, and civilians, men and women. They ruin lives, devastate careers, and destroy hope. They kill the morale of teams, sections, platoons, companies, and flights. And they weaken our military. But they aren't enemy soldiers or terrorists. They are sexual predators. And they are in our own ranks. There is one way to stop them. One thing that stands in their way. All of us. Sexual assaults happen on post, off post, and even overseas in theater. Each year it's alleged our military members commit sexual assault incidents, with many of them going unreported. The victims are women and men. The crimes are aggravated sexual contact, abusive sexual contact, attempted rape, and rape. One of the most challenging issues facing today's military is sexual assault. Sexual assault can affect male or females, and we as leaders need to make sure that our Guard members know it's not just a female-specific problem. Sexual assault, it just doesn't affect the victim, but affects their family, their friends, and their co-workers. New recruits, they join the Guard or the military, and they want to serve their country. They put themselves in harm's way, and they don't deserve to be victims from within. We as leaders need to make sure that people are aware of this, they're conscious of it, even in theater. Airmen and soldiers are at risk. Sometimes it's civilians that work for the military department. If we have someone in our organization, in our Guard family, that is willing to harm another family member, then they must and will be held appropriately accountable. Sexual assault in the AOR is especially vile. These are the people you're fighting side by side with, you live in the same area together, and you are constantly around them. And in many cases, you even go outside the wire together. Your life is in their hands. To harass or sexually assault this person is just wrong. The damage to a sexual assault victim is often hidden. Wounds that you can't see. Pain that can't easily be healed. And it goes far beyond the victim. You get to see pictures of service members in Afghanistan and Iraq and what happens when they get blown up by IEDs or gunshot wounds. You can see how that affects their life. You can see that they lost a leg. You can see that. But you don't see how sexual assault and rape affects a person. It's not just about the act. It's not just about what happened in that moment. It's what happens afterwards, because that's the downhill side of it. What I would say to um, someone that's actually been a victim I would actually tell them that the, the most important thing is they need to think about themselves, right? They're going to be having all kinds of feelings. Uh, they're going to have despair. They're going to have feelings of, you know, anxiety. They're going to have feelings that um, they're not worth anything. And I think the key thing is that they're going to have to deal with that. They're going to have to really help their, their own self uh, step outside of the victimship and seek help sit down and talk to someone because it is not their problem, right? It's, it's the individual who has asserted um, that power over them. It is really their issue. And we need to place blame where, where blame needs to be placed. So that would be probably the, the first thing that I would tell them. Uh, the next thing that I would tell them is that they have to actually seek out um, the support structure. Many of these things, and, and from speaking from personal experience and having been sexually molested uh, as a teenager, um, I sought out what I thought was you know, the right support structure. And unfortunately, it turned out not being uh, the support structure that I needed. And, and I ended up finding you know, solace in, in any place that I could. And, and that meant you know, other family members. That meant uh, reaching out to teachers that helped me to figure out how to, how to deal with this and how to get over uh, the overall issue. And it wasn't until I was probably uh, in my, my late 20s before I really started coming to grips with the fact that this had been done to me and it was not my, pro it was not my fault. It was not my fault. And that's what I think that victims need to understand is that it's not their fault. There's absolutely nothing that they do that makes this right. Right? There's, there's absolutely nothing that they do that would, that would make it 
their problem and for someone to exert that, that influence over them. Reporting a sexual assault is one of the toughest decisions anyone can make. If I had a commander that felt like someone was, was using their position to exert influence, uh, the first thing I would do is to sit down and talk with them about uh, what the Army values are and what the regulation states because it's not, it's not proper, right? It's, it's not the thing that we should be allowing to happen. And even if it's someone that we know um, very, very well, I think we, it, it is our responsibility to step outside of those friendships and do what's right, and do what's right for the, for the system. And I know that that, is, that seems like it's very, very hard, but you know, just based on having had a number of things happen over my career, you really have to take a look at is this right by the regulation? Is this person doing what's right uh, for the individual? Are we doing what's right by our soldiers? Because if we're not, then I think that we have to call, call that individual on the carpet, and I think that we have to take the higher ground and, and take action. People wonder if the military is serious about sexual assault and sexual harassment. I say that we're very serious about it, and we're taking the problem head on. We've done a lot to create a culture where the victims and the bystanders feel comfortable reporting these criminal acts. Sexual assault is a crime. And simply put, it will not be tolerated in the Maryland National Guard. My expectation is that we all work together and address not only from a prevention standpoint, but offer a quick and swift response to those who commit these crimes while providing the very best care for our victims. We have dedicated and trained sexual assault response coordinators and victims advocates who stand ready to educate our members about sexual assault prevention as well as stand ready to respond to our members in need. And let me reiterate, really, sexual assault has no place in the Maryland National Guard. It's incompatible with our core values. We have a commitment to address this issue on and off duty because failure on our part to address it means we condone it. Everyone needs to understand that those found to have committed this crime will be held accountable. Holding offenders accountable is a top priority for the National Guard. On active duty, court-martial sentences for sexual assault crime have included significant periods of confinement and dishonorable discharges. Here in Maryland, while drilling with the National Guard, we are subject to state law, in which the penalties for sexual assault convictions can be just as severe. Remember, in addition to confinement, fines, and a felony record, those convicted of sexual assault also become registered sex offenders, a stigma that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. There's so much more to lose when you commit sexual assault. The backbone of the military rests upon the actions of its members. So once a soldier or airman commits sexual assault, the military then has it's, it's lost its core values. Integrity, honor, you lose that trust you built with your superiors and those around you. On top of that, the individual loses their rank. I mean, they've worked so hard to earn it, to achieve it, and ultimately, that one bad decision could take all that success in a matter of seconds. The best solution is preventing the crime before it happens. Intervening before sexual assault occurs is the same as protecting your battle buddy under fire. It takes loyalty, it takes courage, and it's your duty. In combat, you're not going to fly away from a downed air crew. Same thing with sexual assault. You're going to go in there and you're going to get that person out of the situation. A while back, I was at a house party with a few friends and I noticed that one of my friends, who might have had a little too much to drink, was being forcefully led into a room by a guy she obviously didn't want to be alone with. I walked up to the room and I pounded on the door saying that something came up and we had to leave immediately. Later on, she thanked me for getting her out of what could have been a pretty dangerous situation. We've all been around someone who's had too much to drink. If you see your buddy about to hurt themselves or someone else, you ask yourself, should I do something? Do I want to be that guy and go against my friend? Well, yes, you should. You should step in and do something about it because you want to save your buddy from hurting someone and you want to save your buddy from making a big mistake. So when you're stepping in, you're not just preventing someone from being a victim. You're also preventing your buddy from hurting themselves or ruining their careers. Ça demande vraiment beaucoup de courage d'intervenir dans des situations de sexual assault. En faisant cela, non seulement 
pour sauver la personne de quelque chose qui pouvait la détruire physiquement, mais aussi mentalement pour le reste de sa vie. I believe it takes a lot of courage to intervene in sexual assault situation. By doing so, you are not only saving that person from something that's going to hurt them physically, but also mentally for the rest of their life. Be a good battle buddy. If you see an inappropriate or vulnerable situation, say something, step in, stop bad behavior, have the moral courage to do the right thing. Because the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. Todo podemos. Si una persona toma la iniciativa, la siguiente hará lo mismo. If one person stand up, the other person will, and everybody else will follow through. This will make the unit stronger and the guard stronger. It's important for everyone to know what to do if they've been sexually assaulted or harassed, or someone they know has been. Don't be afraid of identifying the perpetrator, even if it's someone you know. We owe it to other victims to make sure it gets reported so that proper authorities can act upon it immediately. The Maryland National Guard is our organization, and we all have an obligation to ensure that it's free of sexual assault and harassment. Sexual predators will continue until someone has the courage to stop them. Do the right thing, look out for each other, and report sexual predators. Together, we can defeat the threat of sexual assault, and when we do, will be a stronger Maryland National Guard for it.